Hi guys and girls, in this video we're going to take a look at using a sync storage in React Native to be able to save data locally in the application. Let's say you maybe have created a to-do app and you want to save the data from the to-do app, you can use a sync storage to save the data locally instead of maybe using a MySQL database and saving the data in a database. So we're going to start by removing the default layout. And we're going to include the touchable opacity component to be able to create buttons. We're going to create just one button, simple button to, to save data. We're going to create another button to display the data. You can leave the container here for now and you can also leave the style sheet. So let's go ahead and create a new touchable opacity component. Let's add some text in it. And we can just say, uh, click me to save data. And we're also going to add an on press function to the touchable opacity. And this function is uh, going to actually save the data for us. So let's call it uh, save data. And we can go ahead and create that function right now. And yes, to try it out, we can uh, try to alert testing. So reload emulator and click on it. And yeah, it seems to be working. <coughs> and also now we're going to include the sync storage. Which we're going to use to actually save the data. So now the first thing we want to do is we want to save something in with the sync storage. You cannot save like a JavaScript object or something like that. You can only save a string. So let's go ahead and just uh, create a variable. Let's name it uh, user and uh, you can name him John, John Doe. And then to actually save the data with a sync storage, you're going to use a sync storage dot set item. You're going to give the item a key, which we can save as user. And then save the name. And that's it. Now if you quick click reload the application and click on uh, save data, it's going to save it. But we haven't done anything to display the actual data yet, so of course it won't show. So the next thing we're going to do is create a new button. You can copy this. And uh, let's uh, say click me to display data. And we're going to create a new function to display the data. So we can name it display data. And let's create the display data function right now. The display data function is going to be a sync function. It's written like this. This async function will allow us to use the await operator, which we will need to get the save data from the sync storage. I'm going to show you how to type it right now. We're going to try to execute the get data from the sync storage. And if it doesn't work, we're going to catch the error. So now what you want to do is uh, create a variable, name it the user. And then we're going to use the await keyword and use the sync storage get item. Now the item we want to get is this item, the user. Now this await operator, it's used to wait for a promise. And the promise object is going to represent the completion or the failure right here of the function. So we just can just try to alert the data we have set previously with the set item. So let's alert. 
the user and this should give us the name we just set and if it doesn't work let's catch the error we can just say alert error so yes reload the application and let's see if it works to display the data yeah it's working so now as you can see first we're setting the data with the save data button and then we're displaying the data that we have set Now let's say maybe you don't want to save just like one string then we can actually create an object but since we can't save an object with async storage we're gonna have to use JSON to stringify it so we're gonna stringify uh, the object to a string so let's create a JavaScript object let's go to object and give it a name Let's name it uh, John Doe. You can give it an email. Test at gmail.com or whatever. And maybe a city. Let's type Stockholm. And now to be able to save this entire object right here in the sync storage. We're going to have to use uh, json.stringify. And this is actually going to make the object into a string. Like that. And now, to be able to display the uh, a property of the object, like the name, the email, city, we're going to parse it, parse the object with the uh, json parse. So create a new variable, let's name it uh, parsed, then we're going to use JSON to parse. And we're going to parse the user, which is the key we have set with the object. So to be able to access a property of the object, we're going to use the, the parsed variable. And let's say we want to display the name. We can use alert parsed uh, dot name. So go ahead and reload the application. And we're gonna save data. And then we're gonna display the data. Now as you can see, it's displaying the name property of the object. Maybe we want to display the email. We're just gonna type email instead. Reload the application and display data, and we're getting the email. And of course, the same thing if you want to display the city. We're getting the city. This can be useful if you want to, like, let's say you want to have a user application where users can uh, sign up and sign in. You can save the uh, data in the sync storage like this instead of like setting uh, each uh, item for itself like this. Like name, Yondo, um, email test at gmail.com so this is a much uh, easier way to do it there you go i hope you learned something about how to use the sync storage in your application bye bye